Welcome, everyone, to episode 119 of One Hour, One Decision, One H, One D. I am Chris. And I am Tom. And we take 60 minutes and play a random game on Xbox Game Pass and decide, well, is jumping through temples worth our time? I think you're supposed to run through temples. True. But there is some jumping, right? Yeah. But what if you were a ghost? Oh, that's a good question. And many more that we'll ask, try to answer in this episode as we're going to be talking about Phantom Abyss by Team Wibby. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I, I, I trust you. There's no one here to tell me otherwise. But this is a game preview game. So technically, this game didn't actually come out yet. It is still in development. That's right. So... That's what I have here in my notes. And for me, as always on the PC, this is a paltry 2.4 gigabytes on the PC. Tom, what about you? I am pleased to announce that they have magically saved you a 0.1 gigabyte. Oh. 2.3 gigabytes on the Xbox Series S. Wow. It's good to see that number underneath the PC number. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's good stuff. Well done, Team Wibby. But Team Wibby, what kind of game is it? I have first person action adventure. Yeah, I put first person Legends of the Hidden Temple run. I I like it. I don't think that that's a recognized genre though, but <laughs> yeah. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. What about that game loop though, Tom? Uh, here, here's where you get to have a little bit more creative freedom, Chris. Uh, okay. Explore ruined temples, dodging traps to find a hidden relic, and then I put in parentheses, be Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I put down, get to the end of the temple alive and collect relics. Yes and yes. Yeah. Because and Then you there's... go back to a, a hub world and do it again. Yep. Pretty much. And how about let's talk about those likes in this game, Phantom Abyss. What do we yes. like? Uh, I want to start by saying I, I try to check this first before I start playing, which is look at the options. Yep. And I was pleased as punch to see a very thorough options menu. Uh, you can literally remap all of your controls. Nice. I didn't uh, okay. because I think they, they were mapped pretty well. But I love to see the ability to do that thing if I want to do it. That's always a good thing. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Especially since it's a game that's not fully fleshed out yet. Yes. And they've already thought about allowing players to do that. So good for yeah. them. Kudos. And there, and there were plenty of other options too. I, I, I just, I, I like to highlight the remapping controls because that yeah. tends to be some of the more minutia. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of options menus don't go all the way there. Right. Um, but if they do, that means the other rest of the options are probably pretty good. Yeah. And I actually played this game both, well, initially a mouse and keyboard and then changed to the controller. Both were pretty, pretty good. They worked, they worked pretty well. I think I was near the end. I think I preferred mouse and keyboard for this game. Uh, I mean, generally, when, when I play first-person shooters, I would prefer yeah. mouse and keyboard as well. So Yeah. Well, because, I mean, I guess there there is some precision that you need to have in yes. this game that, you know, which, you know, there's a lot of platforming in this game. So uh, I thought this game had a neat concept because it isn't your typical first-person shooter. It's not a shooter at no, all. No, it's not. In fact, you're just running around. I think, well, the closest thing that I can think of is... Like Mirror's Edge in a way. Yes. You know, that game Mirror's Edge. And 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 because of the, the ridiculousness, uh, the, the, the insanity of trying to make it to the end of the temple, there are a bunch of other people that are doing it at the same time. And that gave me the same feeling of like a Fall Guys. Yes. So you are a bunch of people trying to get to the end of the course, in this case, the, the temple to get the relic. But, uh, you know, there are obstacles in the way that are, are going to kill you. Yes. Or try to. So and, and not, not unlike Fall Gals. Fine. Right. 
Right. But I mean, there is no, I guess in a way there's rounds because you're, as you progress to the next temple, there are like, I guess, fewer and fewer people in those temples. So. Yes. So, yeah. What else did you like about this game? Uh, I thought the tutorial was well done. It is very much a teach you while you play. Yeah. Um, And I thought that was done at a very good pace. I never felt overwhelmed by any of the uh, explanations or controls. Sometimes we play games and it's like, oh, uh, this was not that. This was, there aren't a whole lot of controls. So they could, you know, spread them out pretty easily. It's really just, you know, generally, how do you navigate a first person environment? Mm -hmm. And then with the added feature of the whip. Yeah. You know, so you're whipping and swinging around uh, the world. The whip was Uh, a pretty cool tool. It was a pretty cool tool. It was, and uh, I appreciated that using the whip and and just generally exploring in general, you get uh, rewarded. Mm-hmm. They they tucked chests and things into corners and things like yep. that. So there is uh, multiple ways to get to the relic. You know, ultimately at mm-hmm. the end, uh, and on the way there, you know, you are rewarded for you know going and checking out little side caverns and things like that. Yeah, they may absolutely. be dead ends, but you do get something out of going down that dead end. Right. Like there are, there, uh, I think that it does allow you to be creative in how the whip especially allows you to be creative in how you get to your, your destination. And I, I mean, just because it was added, you know, it reminded me very much of like Titanfall and the, the way that tra- you traverse yes. the world. You know, they, they just you you felt you felt very light and and just nimble for the most part. I do I do wonder or would it would be great if they added a wall run mechanic or maybe that's a perk that you get. I don't know. That would be kind of cool if you could do that. That'd be neat. But yeah, it does uh, it does it does seem like the kind of game that would benefit from that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but like you said, like it's it's cool that they give you uh, you know in a, in a very rogue like sort of way. Um, you get different perks as you get to re- you like, you know, it's pick this or that kind of yep. thing and you get it for the level and depending on, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. So, yeah, <laughs> I like, I liked also when you started a run, you knew how many players there are and you will constantly be reminded of people that are dying because you will hear the noise of their deaths, like, like a basically like a drum beat that happens. And then you can collect their essence, which I believe gives you, uh, like gives you points as you collect them. But in in other modes, it actually allows you to heal yourself, which I didn't realize that. So like, there's like a classic mode where that where that I, I don't know how this game is classic already because it didn't even come out yet. But hey, whatever, you know, it, it is what it is. But I thought that was cool, and 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 the variety of the traps I thought was was nice. You know, yeah. you have your typical spike traps. You have your, you know, the the dropping uh, platforms and, and and such. But you know, then, then there's like the spinning blades, and then there's uh, bombs that, um, you know, like like mines rally, really not bombs, but and then the platforms that move around as you get through them. It, it really did make you feel like you were at, in a game show. Like, uh, and, and, um, was it an NXT or? A most extreme elimination MXC, challenge, M- MXC. MXC. Yes, yes. So, so yeah, that was cool. Or, or really, Legends of the Hidden Temple. That was the other thing that it got yeah, to because yeah, yeah, yeah. because you have your guardians that chase after you in this game. Yes, in in your in your runs, and then those get changed up every run too. Which you know, as you I guess continue to play it, you will realize, you know, what the what their particular um abilities are and how they will affect you and and they just pop up out of nowhere so you you better start running that's all you got to do got to keep moving yeah absolutely what did you what did what else did you like about this game um i think that you know we've talked a little bit about it i think generally speaking like solving these puzzles and finding these relics is is a pretty fun and rewarding experience like yeah you when once you've gotten past the traps and you haven't gotten killed, and especially seeing everybody else that got murdered along the way, <laughs> yeah. you feel like when you succeed, you're like, Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Um, and it feels pretty good. And you go back to the overworld and you add a little trophy to your, you know, empty display case. <laughs> um 
and then you get stuff for permanent, which is nice, right? Like you, yeah. you prestige, they call it, uh, your whip, and yep. you get like new skins on it, or you get a new version of the whip that has right. maybe a different buff on it. Um, and those sorts of things, you know, it feels good. It feels like you're making progress towards yeah. a, a, an ultimate goal. Absolutely. And I, I also, I didn't mention this in my notes, but I'm, now I'm thinking about it. I liked how it gave you like a little trail of where you've been, where you've gone and stuff like that. So you can kind of, you could backtrack if you need to, like if you get lost. So that's, that's, that was helpful to be able to have that option there. And, you know, so, because these, these, these temples can get pretty, pretty hairy and can be, can cause a lot of panic. So being yes. able to fi find your uh, line, so to speak, to get back is, is useful. Uh, last yummy good thing that I want to mention before we move on to the not yeah. so great things is that I think the art and the music suit the theme of the game. Mm. Uh, it, to me, it felt very like pulp, like yeah. it felt, you know, like Indiana Jones or something yeah. like that. Like it, it, I just think it was a good, good fit. Right. Yeah. It, uh, not, not like groundbreaking in no. terms of how it looks and stuff like that, but it was, it, it was good for what it is. And, yeah, I think uh, it, it got the job done. Exactly. Exactly. So what about those dislikes? What what didn't get the job done in this game? Uh, so at least in the very early uh, levels, yeah. uh, before they give you the hearts and things, I guess mm. really in the tutorial, I didn't realize this when I wrote it down, but it frustrated me, was uh, that you got killed by everything. Like everything was like a one hit kill. <laughs> yep. Um, so I wrote every obstacle is a Mega Man spike. Mm. So like, you know, in Mega Man, some things shoot you and they take a couple of points of life away, but there are spikes that if you touch them, you die. Yep. Um, and that was what I was experiencing here where it, it, some things feel like they shouldn't kill you, but do, yep. you know? Yeah. I mean, I would I would think that if you got impaled by spikes, you'd be dead. Sure, yeah. And and I think that if something <laughs> falls from the sky and pancakes yeah. you, like, yeah, okay. Right. Maybe maybe right. that should kill you. <laughs> but if if you like graze something, it's like yeah. it's like when you're like Mario and you touch a Goomba and you die and you're like, right. Really? Yeah. That guy? I just touched him. <laughs> I, I I totally agree with you. And I think because this game is in first person, it was hard sometimes to judge your your, your like like have that spatial awareness where yeah. like if you've if you've crossed a trap or whatnot, oh I forgot you know I forgot to do it forgot to look to see if I can see my feet. Oh no, I don't think I don't think you can though. I don't believe I, you can. I don't think so either. I I think with all the swinging around I would have done, yeah. I would have seen my feet and then never right. Did. Right. So that's also kind of disappointing because it's. Especially for a game that you're uh, you're essentially platforming as in first person, yeah, and you've got to you got to be able to know how to how to judge where you're where you're landing, you know. And that was that was uh, very frustrating. It is a roguelike, which you know for me generally is not a big uh, big thing that I like uh, that I enjoy to enjoy playing. So yeah. dying stinks. But I will say the fact that you know as you are playing the game. You're not you. You don't have an, just one life like you thought in the tutorial. Right. You have multiple hearts, so you can kind of give yourself a little breathing room throughout yeah. your run. It ended up ultimately being a little bit more forgiving once right. you're actually playing the game proper. Right. And I'm not generally a fan of procedurally generated levels because. For me, like I want to know, like if I, especially if it's something that I have to constantly do over and over again. Sure. Like I want to be able to see that line. Like I need to know, okay, I, this particular level, I'm going to go this way, this route. I'm going to try to do it as best as quickly as possible. And the fact that the, you know, you're, you're changing it up every time for me is like, it's a bit, a bit frustrating for me, but I yeah. can understand. I can understand like why they did it because it, it gives them the variety of, you know the 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 kind of traps and stuff that you're dealing with, and gives you it keeps it fresh for some people. Yeah, you know. But and uh, you've got you've got a. It's it is frustrating that you only basically get three attempts at a level, and then if you fail right. those three attempts, you'll never see that level again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also for me, 
I think it's, I'm with you that that's kind of lame, but I think it's also kind of interesting in that like you can't get stuck. Mm. Right. So if a level of a level is too hard. I mean, you don't get a fourth attempt. You, you, right. I mean, and it doesn't, yeah. the game doesn't stop, right? Like if yeah. you fail three times, you go again and now you're somewhere else. Yep. Maybe you'll have better luck there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's one way of thinking about it. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit silver lining here. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of things that don't give me silver linings though, what the hell? An X- EXP penalty? Yeah. Debts do penalize you, but it is... I- Overall, like for a rogue, like I think they're they're pretty forgiving. They are with their. They are. I, I think for the most part, you like to your point early on, the game does feel like you're consistently making progress yes. as long as you're as long as you're trying, right? You're consistently making progress, but they do penalize you for dying. But yeah. if you if you do te- if you do try to explore things and you know collect the gems and and and, and you know whatnot throughout the throughout the level. That helps you, and then you the the potential death can be unnegated. I guess yes. <laughs> is the word. So, M- mitigated. Is mitigated. The word. There you go. Thank you so much. So, so that's that was cool. And but I, I I agree that overall though it does suck that to get that kind of penalty uh, as a concept it sucks. Yeah, don't do it. Right. Game designer, anybody who's listening to this, if you were thinking about making a game and taking away people's forward progress, don't. Yeah. Makes me want to not play your game. Right. Um, speaking of other things that make me not want to play this game, this this entity that I was mm. working for. Yeah. Is this he's like Olmec from the Legends of the Hidden Temple, <laughs> yeah. which I put down as well. Yeah. But he seems evil. Yeah. Like I, I don't know if I want to collect the relics for this guy, but right. I don't think I have a choice. No, you don't. You absolutely don't, because you're stuck there with him. Yeah, so, he's like, collect all these relics, and then we'll both get out of here. It's I'm like, like uh, maybe now. Yeah, do I want to release you? Yeah, well, you're a selfish person. The other thing that was like, um, I thought that was kind of weird was I felt like, I don't know if you noticed this, but your character kept changing. No, I didn't notice that. So like, there there was like my one character that's in like that that hub world. Was uh-huh. one person like at one point, I, like I was wearing gloves, and and like I was a female, and then when I went into the into the actual temple, I didn't have gloves on, and I was a male. I was like, oh, huh, that's interesting. So, like, just change up your character every every time. You I did not her. see an option to like pick my character anywhere. True. So yeah. That's kind of confusing. That Which I found those. I found curious, especially since you are going to present to other players. Like, yeah, it's weird that you don't get to pick what your right. what your phantom will look yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. That was kind of weird. I know it's a game preview game, but yeah, maybe that gets sorted out later. It could be sorted out there. And, but on top of that, you know, I had I, I know you were talking about music and stuff like that. I didn't really hear that much music. I no. didn't hear music. I didn't have that much um, like sound effects other than really the whip and maybe yeah. my character grunting every once in a while. But yeah, it, was, it seemed kind of buggy though, the audio. And I did see a couple of T-posing uh, yeah. companions or my, my phantom buddies. So that was kind of hilarious to see that. But also, you know, I get it. It's game preview, but I, you know, we're, we're talking about the game. We're going to, we're going to point yeah, it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Speaking of something I don't think is going to get resolved when this yeah. game goes live is uh, the voice acting um, is that nonsensical mm. simlish, you know, stuff we don't like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't they, I don't think they're going to put in proper voice acting on a game like this. It just doesn't seem like a, a, somewhere they're going to spend resources. Did you talk to the lady that was in the hub world with you? Yeah, but she didn't like voice she, act. She didn't have any voice acting either, right? Okay. No, I, I didn't know just, if she did the sim thing for you but like it was she was completely silent for me yeah completely silent for me yeah. and then the 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 big uh relic man yeah aztec god guy yeah dark he, old he's Mac. yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh anything else here on dislikes that you want to talk about Tom? i think i'm all set here i am ready to move on to other thoughts all right so what about why don't, why don't you go start ahead with those other thoughts? um I want to point out that I noticed online 
they have uh, updates. Yep. Uh, so you can see there, new content is being constantly added. It is in game preview, as cool. we discussed. The game is yeah. not done. Um, so uh, I think it's cool. You know, I like looking at patch notes. I, I grew up yeah. playing online games, MMOs, and that sort of stuff. So I, right. I like to see this is what was added today. Um, and you can do that with this game. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, additional modes uh, that yeah. you mentioned earlier. I did not unlock them while playing. Uh, so I don't know what that looks like. And there also was some ability to play multiplayer, which I also didn't huh. touch. Uh, I don't know what that looks like either, but it looked, it sounded like simultaneous multiplayer, not this asynchronous uh, ghost, right. ghost car. Yeah. What well, time I thought, trial. I, I thought when this game first came out or first heard about this game, that the idea was every, like you were, everyone was kind of timed overall to get mm -hmm. to to get that like final relic so it was like a mad dash so i was like i remember when i first loaded up the game i was like oh man like do i have to just like try to beeline it to the to the to the altar or wherever this relic is as quickly as possible and like not try to explore but then i felt like it wasn't as you there wasn't that much of a rush to get to no. it as as uh it seemed to, to be so that was cool and um yeah I, I there are there are a lot of other modes it seems like i just wish maybe they would focus on one mode and you know yeah. make sure that's all ironed out before they continue to add more but all those modes are on are, are locked behind i guess you have to complete this first mode so yeah. so yeah and but this game does have cloud gaming but Ooh you do need a controller you do need oh, a controller. Oh. so let's uh, keep that in mind so, yeah, and again, like we said, this is a game preview game, so still a lot of things we might be missing. And like you mentioned, though, they're they're adding stuff all the time. So, cool, cool beans. So, Tom, is this a game that we're going to be uh, keeping on our respective hard drives, or are we casting it into the abyss? <laughs> yeah, you just let, let one of those, like, floor traps open and just drop the game in it. Yes. Um, but... And before we get to that, I have to thank our sponsor, cdkeys.com, for, for, you know, helping us out, you know, helping us support the show here. And, you know, you guys check out CD Keys. They, they, they've always got some really cool stuff going on on their website, like awesome stuff. You're getting discounts on PC games, Xbox games, PlayStation games, and they have deals all the time. Daily the time. deals. Yeah. Daily deals, even. So... They've got some good stuff over there. Check out our description down below if you're watching this on YouTube or the uh, podcast audio description. We got a link there that you know will get you get you going in CD Keys and get you some cool stuff there. Well, that is very exciting, and you know what else is exciting is What's my that? final decision. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Let's see. It. Let's hear. It. Uh, I think this one is fun to play in short bursts. Yep. Uh, and it reminds me, we've said it already, uh, like a solo version of Fall Guys. Yeah. And see, to me, that actually improves the experience <laughs> because I do not like getting pushed off by some right. jerk. Uh, right. So these, because it's asynchronous multiplayer, the other people who do things around you do not kill you. So right. that's great. Um. It's also not a very large game, 2.3 gigabytes, right? doesn't take yeah. up a whole lot of space. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty confident it's only going to get better as more of these features get added. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Nice. Okay. Good stuff. How about you? Well, there was definitely some elements to this game that made me want to keep trying. And for me, especially since it's a like, and it kept me wanting to try mm. and it's small enough i think i am going to keep it too this is this is i mean well done team Wibby, for making a roguelike that that can be enjoyable roguelikes can be enjoyable if you make them right yeah so if you, if you maybe do them as a as a first person action <laughs> game instead right. of right whatever else we were playing T you know. top top down uh, uh, isometric yeah. yeah hard pass but those are our thoughts. Let us know what you think of this game. Follow us and say hello on Twitter at TC1H1D or shoot us an email at TC1H1D at Outlook.com. Check out our next streams on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash 1H1D. And 
like we mentioned before, we got this podcast on not just audio, but video. And you could be talking, looking at us right now and send us a comment down below. And we'll try to respond if we can. And 1H Wendy is part of that QTV network. So if you like gaming podcasts and other cool content, again, we've got some cool stuff going on on the, on the blogs, blog sphere as well. Check all that stuff out at quitthebill.com slash network. So Tom, we got something a little exciting for our next episode. Is it that we're going to su- uh, spin the surprise me button? <laughs> <laughs> no. In fact, we have a game that's that's um that's pretty recent uh, that we're going to be talking about. It is The Last Case of Benedict Fox. Ooh, yeah. And that game we're going to be talking not just between ourselves, but we might have a guest on the show talking about Oh, oh. we'll find out the verdict on yeah. this case. Yes. On the next episode. Absolutely. So that is it for this episode. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.